Welcome back to the Old Shed Workshop. In today's project, I want to show you the process I use to wire my truck for DC to DC charging. My truck is a 2021 F450 6.7 power stroke diesel King Ranch. For clarification, this is not a video on installation of the DC to DC converter in the camper. This is a video on how I wired the truck and cleaned up a couple of what I thought were loose ends just to neaten things up on the camper side. I'll show you all the pieces and parts I used in the process, and I'll include links to all those items below in the detail. This is your first time here. My name is Mike. I'd like to invite you to take a moment to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for future videos. You guys that are watching my videos and spending some time and liking and subscribing have really helped me to grow my channel. So let me show you the pieces and parts. Seems like a good place to start. When I bought my camper, the previous owner had DC to DC charging hooked up in his truck. This is the Anderson plug that he used with six gauge wire. I think this plug was a little bit of overkill. This is rated 175 amps and 600 volts. I did quite a bit of reading and determined that this same Anderson plug, which is rated at 50 amps and 600 volts, is sufficient for six gauge wire. So this was overkill. I think this would have handled four gauge wire to maybe even zero gauge. So these are the plugs that I bought Anderson plugs you can't make a mistake with these they only go one way they go gray to gray there's red yellow blue black and gray I understand the black will interchange with the gray but the red the blue and the yellow are color specific none of the colors can be mixed so you can't make a mistake everything's marked positive and negative and they only go together one way. Each of the plugs comes with the pins. And on the pins, there's a side that has a high side. And there's a side that has a little hook. They go in one way. So as they go in, they hook onto the metal clip that's inside the connector. That comes with it. I bought these to mount in the camper and in the bulkhead of the truck. These are flush mounts for the Anderson connectors. This one will go right inside the bulkhead of the truck with the wires coming down and going up the frame to under the hood. In addition to that, I bought these covers so that when everything is mounted, I can close the cover and keep everything protected from the weather. In addition to that, under the hood, I bought these six gauge, three eighths inch ring connectors to go to the poles on the battery. And I'll show you how I did that when I get up under the hood. These come with the shrink tubing and this shrink tubing has an adhesive inside it. So it also seals it with the adhesive. They come with red and black for the positive and negative. I bought 30 feet of brand new six gauge wire, red and black. In order to run it up, I bought one inch wire loom. This came in 50 feet. The wire I was able to buy in 30 feet. With six gauge wire, you'll have such limited line loss over 25 feet that it's negligible. This is what I have left over. I've got about five or six feet left over. You need a good set of cutters for a heavy duty wire. These come in very handy. I'll put a link to these below as well. I had to drill a hole along a couple of places under the truck and a cross member that's a lighter gauge steel than the frame steel. 
This is the largest one in the package that I bought. So you drill a quarter inch hole and you put the Christmas tree in. Then the cable tie comes around and goes through and locks. And then you can cut it off like a regular wire tie. This came in invaluable. Going up along the frame, there were places that I couldn't tie this off along another existing harness. So I had to find a place to run it. This made things much easier because I could mount the, the wire loom where I wanted it to be. In order to make all the crimps, I bought this hydraulic crimper. This is your friend. This was only about $40 on Amazon. Even the ones at Harbor Freight are $80 or $90. So this was, this was a pretty good buy for what I had to do. Comes with several jaws for several different uh, wire sizes. And this was invaluable. I'll do some of the crimping on the bench here because the ones I have to do outside, it's just much easier to show the crimps on the bench. I'm not going to show the entire wiring under the truck, but I'll show you where I started, how I did it, and how I terminated everything at the battery. This is how I mounted the Anderson plug connector in the bulkhead of the truck. I wanted it to be as close to the seven pin plug as possible. There's these three ribs here in the bulkhead. And I had to go over this far because there's a support right here inside the fender well. So what I did was I took the wire and I put the terminal pins on the ends of the wire took a piece of bailing wire down through here and I pulled the wire up, plugged the pins in, and then mounted the Anderson plug in the bulkhead. The reason I started from the rear and worked forward was because I knew when I got into the engine compartment, I was going to have to cut the wires to different length, and I didn't want to have to pull wire in one direction and end up too short. So I thought if I started at this end and worked my way forward, I would alleviate that problem. Here's where the wires come through the bulkhead and down along the inside of the fender. Come down to here. A couple of places here where I could use regular wire ties right through this cross member. And I started to follow it up along the frame. You can see here where I used one of those push mount zip ties and then was able to continue to follow another harness further up beside the frame. From the point where I put in that push mount zip tie, I come around the frame and I pick up this factory harness right here. I continue to follow the factory harness, follow this all the way to the front of the truck. When I get up to the front of the truck, I continue to follow this harness until I get right to the fender well. I try how well you can see it. I go right up behind the inside fender well, right up into the engine compartment. My harness comes right up to the battery where I come to a 60 amp MIDI fuse, M-I-D-I fuse. There's a spot right here where I was able to mount that. There's a little jumper that goes from here to the battery. On these battery terminals, there's no mounting point to pick up a hot side. So what I did was I disconnected the battery terminal. I drilled a hole through this flat pot on the other side, and I mounted a small bolt. That gave me a point where I could connect my hot lead. The negative came right around the battery to here. There is a, a mounting stud on the negative. So all I had to do for the negative was find a, a nut and a washer to make that connection. Maybe able to see it better from this angle. This might be a better angle to see. I come up through the wire loom. Hot side goes 60 amp fuse. And then 
to the hot side. I didn't have enough of my leftover wire to make the pigtail to go from the camper to the truck. If I bought a 10 foot length of number six wire, red and black, it would have cost me about $40. The alternative to that is Harbor Freight, a pair of number six wire jumper cable, 16 feet, $18. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the ends off. And then I'll cut this 16 footer in half. And this is going to be my pigtail to go from the camper to the bed of the truck. Before I start crimping the terminal ends on, I want to run the wire into the wire loom. To do that, I just put the ends of the wire in, in a box wrench, put it into the wire loom. And you can just pull the wire right into the loom. When you trim these up, trim them to only the amount you need to fit inside the terminal end. Then you get a nice, neat, finished product. You might say, when you look at the jaws for uh, the particular wire gauge, you might say this is six gauge wire, so I'm going to use the six gauge crimp. Not necessarily so. I had to try a couple of different jaws till I got the one that gave me the best crimp. Doing this on the bench makes things a lot easier. I have something to push against. This gives me the opportunity to hold everything nice and straight. Sometimes you need three hands. That's a nice crimp. That's not coming off. And I already put my shrink tube on instead of trying to get it on everything afterwards. And remember, he's only going one way. So you want to have the terminal ends both going in the same orientation. And you want the, the high side up and the hook side down because these are going to click into the metal piece that's inside the, the connector. Those are nice solid crimps. Give them a good tug. Make sure they're on there good because once they're in, they're in. I'm just going to heat shrink them to get a good solid seal and plug them into the connector. This is what I wanted to clean up a little bit. When this installation was done, it was done using six gauge wire. So I'm going to use the existing wire and just take off this huge plug. So let's cut these. Then I have enough room near my water tank and I have an access door. I'm going to pull these through. Now I'm going to pop out these grommets and mark up the position to mount the new plug. I have the terminal ends on the wires now. I've done the heat shrink tubing and connected the Anderson connector to the flush mount. Now I'm adding the dust cover to keep everything protected from the weather and I'm ready to mount it in its final position. The holes that were left when I took the old plug off, I sealed up with a little bit of cork and I touched up the other a little bit of white paint just to finish everything up. I think it makes for a nice finished look compared to the old big plug that was mounted on the side of the camper. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.